Hey there, Pathless Peddlers. If you follow us on Instagram, then you've probably seen that we recently got a DJI Spark. Uh, this week, we're gonna actually take it out on its first trip and uh, use it to record a new video series that we're doing, which is gonna be kind of like these video field guides for overnighters and two or three day uh, bike touring and bike packing trip. Uh, but in this video, I wanted to show you guys what it's like to actually use the Spark uh, to tr record yourself on a bike so you guys can know if it's something that you actually want to use because uh, it is fun it's a it's an amazingly powerful tool but it also has its quirks so I want to show you kind of the reality of uh, using the spark trying to film yourself on the bike so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put this camera on a chesty and just run it real time so you can see how long it takes to get the drone up in the air and how much footage you can actually shoot on one battery. So with that said, let's go outside. So first we turn on the spark. All right, that guy's on. And uh, now I'm gonna turn on the remote. And uh, you have to manually pair them together every single time uh, you turn them on. You hold this down uh, for three seconds until you get one beep. There's your beep, then you hold down the pause function and the other function. Blink screen. And a solid green connection means we uh, have the remote connected to the Spark. Now, the next step is to connect the, uh, the phone to the remote. And I do this because if you use just the Wi-Fi connection between the Spark and the phone, it eats up your batteries like crazy. These cables connected, the phone in here. Connect the iPhone, hit trust. Open up the app, right? Boom, we can see what the Spark is seeing. I'm going to start recording on the Spark. Right now we have 97% battery life. Uh, so we've got to act quickly. Uh, you can see my bike is over there. So I'm actually going to put this up in the air, go to the bike and put this under the cargo net. Oh. So taking off. So the spark is hovering in the air. Time to put this uh, here in the controller. Gingerly under the cargo net. Um, it's pretty breezy, so it's nice that the spark is holding its altitude so far. <laughs> okay. So what I'm actually gonna do is move the spark over and just shoot from the shadow side because I think that looks more interesting. I'm gonna yaw, uh, gonna drop the gimbal and hopefully find myself. I'm gonna back up the spark. All right, so we're gonna try active track. Um, putting that on, agree, active track, highlight me. And the mode I like to use the, the, the most is the uh, profile mode. So I'm gonna switch to that. And what this does is it should keep the spark at a constant distance and a constant elevation from you. It's not gonna try to go behind you. It's not gonna try to rotate around you. It's just gonna try to track you uh, horizontally. And what's nice about this um, <laughs> is that if you have a cool background, Gonna try to lift up the gimbal here. You can really kind of uh, reveal it as you ride along. So, definitely my favorite mode, but as you can see, the spark uh, changed the gimbal height. I'm gonna see if I can't. Let's fly this guy lower. Maybe we can get more of the what's going on behind me. I don't know if there's a minimum height, but hey, that looks pretty cool. So there are some trees I'm gonna to try to avoid not running the spark into. Uh, stop moving. Okay, <laughs> that's a close one. So cool, it should try to get next to me. 
and because it's set low to the ground you should be able to see actually an interesting horizon okay so this is active track in profile mode um, of the two modes this is my favorite and I'll show you why so I'm gonna stop this real quick um, active track highlight me and this is kind of the regular mode which I feel isn't as cool because what it does is uh, it'll just kind of follow behind you which is fine I guess but it doesn't really reveal the the environment as well I mean the one cool thing about this mode is that you can have it circle around so I'm gonna set that and what's cool with uh, using the, the sticks here you can do on the fly adjustments of uh, elevation uh, how close it is to you etc so I've set it to kind of rotate it is kind of windy so I'm, I'm not sure how successful it'll be in completing a full rotation but you're gonna try <laughs> so far so good I'm gonna move this way and see what happens so the tricky part is if you're riding and you're setting it into intelligent flight mode you totally have to be aware of what it's going to do kind of anticipate where it's going to go uh, so you don't wreck it so i'm going to stop it there i'm going to put it back into uh, profile mode which i like and i'm going to back it up just a bit and it should try to keep a constant distance. I'm going to pedal this way. It should try to keep up with me. Ah! It helps if you press go. So that's too far. So I'm going to move it forward. See if it's got a track. All right. Oh, weird. So for some reason, it did not... Uh, I'm gonna cancel that. It did not go into profile mode. Um, let's try that again. So yes, turned into, okay, here we go. So it's a little behind, maybe I'll let it catch up. So that's another thing about the Spark when it's in active track mode and you're not actively flying it. It actually moves fairly slow. Um, that's one, one thing to be aware of. Let's move it around there, get a little bit more of a profile. And in this mode, if you go towards it, it should push it back. So it's moving backwards. I'm gonna mellow out because, whoa, gonna run into the building. So I'm gonna bring it back to me. <laughs> bring it back to me, come on. All right, so right now we're at 54% battery life. So you can see you don't really have a whole lot of time to mess around with it. So you definitely wanna get uh, your shots uh, dialed in. Um, what else do I want to show you guys? I think I'll show you guys uh, tripod mode, which is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to set it back to active track, have it follow me back to where we started. Go. And I'll show you what. Uh, what tripod mode is all about. So it is pretty gutsy here. Uh, it's nice that the spark is uh, keeping up. It's a stop bit. Taking full manual control now. And uh, 
Okay. So the Spark does not have a 60p or slow motion, but it does have something where you can fake it, and that's called tripod mode. And what basically that means is that it slows everything down and tries to give you as smooth a motion as possible. Uh, so you can do kind of cool reveals. Oops. So, for example, like revealing the bike. Kind of cool. I'm going to try a slow orbit here. Slow manual orbit. I don't know if I can do it. It might, uh, I'll do it to the left. Like staring at me. <laughs> yeah, it's point the camera's the other way. So this is uh, manually trying to orbit it. As you can see it's moving really slowly. Let's see it let's see it the other way. another manual orbit. So basically tripod mo mode uh, lets you move it as slowly and smoothly as possible. And you can kind of fake a slow motion effect. All right. Uh, what else can we do here? Let's try another Let's, let's, let's fake a dolly shot. So I'm gonna yaw it around, start it low, and then reveal it up. Oh my God, it's the most epic bicycle ever. Okay, you got the picture. So right now I'm getting low battery warning, uh, so I'm gonna bring it down. Actually, gonna take it out of tripod mode, just so I can move a little faster. All right. Low battery warning. There's me. It's at 23% and dropping quickly, so I'm just going to land it. All right. So that's the spark. As you can see, it's a pretty cool and powerful tool, but definitely it has its uh, quirks and challenges. Uh, top amongst them is the battery life. You want to have a shot pre-planned in your head already and I bring it up, shoot it, and take it back down. Doesn't really leave much to exploration, uh, but it is a cool compact tool, and I'm probably gonna do more videos about the Spark. Um, I think there might be lots of interest, but hopefully this kind of sheds some light on uh, some of the quirks uh, that you might experience while trying to fly it. Uh, before I end this video, I am gonna show you guys how I was able to hold the controller and the phone on the flight. So as you can see here, I've got the uh, salsa anything cradle. It's got my sleeping bag rod and all this other stuff. Uh, this is a foam pad from a camera case and I've just found some lashing points for this uh, this cargo net that I actually took off my uh, Wald 137 and basically there's just enough tension to hold it in here. There's space for the joysticks to pop up in the screen and it uh, lets me manipulate it. You know you can't go very fast when you're using this, but it does give uh, some level of control. So, all right, so that's it for this video. If you guys have any comments, uh, if, you, if you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments below. And uh, if you liked the video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't, for, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.